everyone! It's Lori Richmond. I'm a children's author, illustrator, and artist. And here's Mona. Mona, my doodle, doodle class assistant today. Um, welcome to doodle class. I love drawing with you guys every Friday. And so, oh, Mona's going to sit right here. That's perfect. So today we are going to draw, oh, she's licking me. We are going to draw florals. And this is inspired by a view from my run painting that I did not too long ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Mona's going to sit right here. And I just love drawing flowers. I find it really, really relaxing um, because you're kind of doing the same repetitive shape over and over again. So this is what, oh, you can't bite this, Mona. This is what we are going to be um, drawing today. And the book that I want to highlight uh, related to our floral art is called When Emily Was Small. And it's by Lauren Saloy. It just came out a couple of weeks ago and it is based on the Canadian artist named Emily Carr. And I thought this would be a great book to highlight because there's a lot of florals in this book. Um, the end papers have this beautiful pattern. Um, and in this book, Emily kind of has an adventure in her garden and there's all these beautiful plants and flowers in the book. So this um, kind of went with the theme for me. So everyone should check out this book when Emily was small. It's really, really beautiful. Um, okay, so before we begin drawing our florals, we are gonna do a materials check. So everyone should have something to draw or paint on, like paper or a pad. Um, today I'm using the Super Sharpie, not the king size I've been using. I'm going, going down a notch and just sticking with the Super Sharpie. It's a little less thick. Um, I'm gonna be painting today, so I am using these liquid watercolors by Dr. P.H. Martins. There's all these different really beautiful colors. I've, I've picked a few um, that are kind of like a pink, a yellow, a green, and a gray that I'm gonna use for shading. Um, I'm using this round watercolor brush. I've got my palette here and I've got some water that hopefully Mona will not drink. <laughs> it's okay if she does right now because it's still plain water, but once we get paint in there, we don't want her to drink it. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is come around the other side of the table. I'm gonna disappear just for a second and then I'll be back. All right, here we go. So, like I said, one of the reasons that I love painting um, or, and drawing flowers is that it I find it really relaxing. Um, drawing all the petals and everything that make the flower feel like it has a lot of volume, you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. So once you do it once or twice, you're a pro and you just keep going and doing the same thing. And then when you um, kind of clump them together, you get this really beautiful um, sort of composition of all of these different flowers. So we're gonna recreate something that looks very similar to this. All right, let me put this in the book so Mona doesn't eat it again. Okay, so everyone grab your drawing tool, whatever you're gonna draw with, your marker, your pen, your pencil, and we're gonna start kind of in the center of the page. It doesn't matter, you can, you can start wherever you want. And we're gonna draw a shape that kind of looks like a snail. We're gonna start with a letter C and we're gonna loop it around, okay? And we're gonna do this kind of small because we're gonna do a lot of flowers on our page. So you don't wanna start off with your one flower taking up the whole page. We wanna make sure that we leave room that we can do it a few, a few times. So I'm gonna start with this letter C that then loops around like that. It's like a curly Q snail. And that's gonna kind of start out being the center of our flower. Now here's where we start to do the same thing over and over again. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a spot um, anywhere on the, on the outside of this curve, and then I'm gonna draw another curve, and I'm gonna connect it wherever I want onto that, onto that little snail shape. You see that? And basically that's what we're gonna do over and over and over again, probably for the next five to 10 minutes. So keep going and keep drawing these little, these little blob shapes and see how I'm making my line a little bit wavy and I'm connecting them in all different areas. See like this one connects here and here. The next one I'll draw will connect 
maybe here to here and see how we're just gonna build it out we're gonna go around and around so this is one um, one thing that it does not have to look perfect right you don't look at a flower and every single petal is in the exact same place they're all kind of smushed together because that's how nature did it so don't worry about your shapes being exactly right you just want to kind of get that sense that this flower has some volume some body to it and we are going to keep building out these shapes these blobs that are going to go around the whole flower and become our petals you see how now that's starting to look more like a flower I do not know the names of any flowers. The only name I know is like a daisy I can identify, a rose I can identify, and like maybe hydrangea, but I'm sure we have people out there that know a lot about flowers. Um, I'm not one of them, so you guys might know a flower that this looks like um, in real life, and that's great. I just don't know what it is. All right, so I'm gonna keep building this one out a little bit more and see how I'm making some of the blobs big, some of the blobs small, and then connecting them all. And you, you can make your shape based on how many of these blobs you want to, you want to create to make that flower shape. Okay, so once we've got one, we're gonna make another one of these. And you can pick a spot anywhere on your page. So I'm gonna make my next one kind of down here a little bit lower. So I'm gonna start again with that letter C, and loop around to make that little snail shape. And I'm gonna keep going with these blobs again that kind of connect to different, different parts of that letter C. And I'm just gonna keep building it out. I'm gonna go, I'll make one on the top, then I'll make one on the side, then I'll make one on the bottom, then I'll make one on the other side. And I keep going and building these out. None of them look exactly the same which is great, that's actually what we want. We don't want them to look exactly the same. And I'm just gonna keep going around and around and building them out. You see, I'm not doing any, anything different. I'm not, I, I use the exact same technique to make these two flowers and I can already see there, the petals are not in the exact same place. They already look a little different and that's exactly what you want. This is the time where I would usually like put on a podcast or something and just kind of zone out as I'm, as I'm drawing these around. Now see here, you might get into this situation where you have your two flowers that are really close together. That's great, because sometimes flowers, um, when they're on a big bush or something, they, um, you know, they're, they're closer together. So if you run into this situation where your flowers are close together, you can still continue with your blobs, but you can make them connect to the other flowers. See, so now it looks like they're kind of, they're kind of touching. All right, so these look pretty good to me. I'm gonna start a third one. I'm gonna maybe do it over here, but I'm gonna make the third one a little bit smaller. Um, Cause when you have a bunch of objects on a page, um, you wanna arrange them in um, a composition, which is their placement on the page, but you also wanna think of scale, which is their size on the page. So if everything is the exact same size, it doesn't really look as interesting. So if we have some flowers that are big and some flowers that are small, you'll see once we add the leaves and everything and we start to color it in, you get um, an image that's just much more dynamic. So I'm gonna start another one here, but I'm gonna make this smaller than the other ones. I still have my little snail shape, but I'm just gonna put less blobs on this one. That's how I'm gonna make it smaller. More blobs all around. I feel like I use the word blob a lot. That's my, that's my scientific artistic term because um, a blob is a legitimate shape, I think. Here we go. So I kind of have a small, a small flower here. Now I'm gonna make another small one maybe up here. I'll move my pad over a little bit so I'll make another one here. I'll make a small one. There's my snail shape and then just keep on blobbing all around. And once you, once you guys do this a couple times, or now we've done it a lot of times, I think you're pros at making these petals now. So again, you just keep doing the same thing around and around and around. Make a little flower like that. And then I'm gonna make another one. Let me decide, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna put it right here. Um, so there's kind of like a rule in composition where 
odd numbers of things look better to the eye than even numbered things. So here we have a group of four, which is an even number. So if we add one more that makes it five, an odd number, it has a stronger composition. And again, I'm sure there's some like fancy art reason why, as to why that is. Um, I don't remember what it is, <laughs> but that is um, just something that like you kind of, you know, I do automatically when I'm working on things. So let's add a fifth flower here in this lovely composition. Then after we add this flower, we're gonna add some greenery, some leaves to make this really feel like we are in a garden or something. Maybe it's Emily Carr's garden, the artist from that book. So here we go. I think I'm gonna make this one big also like the other ones. There we go. A nice big beautiful flower like that. Cool. So does everybody have their their collection of flowers? So the petals don't just float in the air, right? They're connected to stems. There's leaves on them. Um, so that's what we're going to do next. So a leaf shape, you could kind of make it um, like a foot. It's almost like a football shape, or you could make um, something that's more of like this. I like leaves that are shaped like this, where it has a little bit of a curve at the end. So it's kind of like a little hill with a little dip at the end, and then you just make a symmetrical, meaning it's the same, it's just flipped on the other side, like that. And see how I made it kind of looking like it's coming out of the flower, like it's tucked underneath there? So what I want you to do is just like we made different size flowers, we're gonna make different size leaves, kind of in this shape, and we're gonna put them all around our flowers. So let's go ahead and add those on anywhere we want, anywhere we think looks good. We're gonna put some leaves on there. And don't be shy, like put, put, a, lot of, put a lot of leaves on there because it'll make it look really, really full and pretty. Like maybe we went for a walk and we saw this beautiful bush of flowers. Again, too, is that the right term? Do flowers grow in a bush? I think some flowers do, I don't know. <laughs> You know who really likes um, plants and flowers is my husband. That's been one of his pandemic activities. He's been trying to grow some plants in our window and I, I refer to them as Mona's salad bar because sometimes she eats the plants. Um, and you have to be careful because there's a lot of flowers and plants that are toxic to cats and dogs. You have to make sure they're safe. Um, all right, let's keep rolling with these leaves. Hopefully you guys have got some really good leaf shapes in there. And so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just hint at some stems, right? Because again, we have flowers, we have leaves, they're not gonna be floating in the air. We're gonna have to kind of ground them with some stems. So find little air, little pockets between your flowers and your leaves where maybe you didn't, you didn't draw anything. There's like little pockets in there. And we're just gonna put little lines like this, just two lines next to each other, and that's gonna allude to a stem being there. We don't need to see the whole stem. We don't need to see where the stem goes into the ground or into the, you know, another part of the plant. We just want to allude that it's there. So we're going to do that by putting the stem in these little pockets of space that are between the flowers. Maybe here at the, at the bottom, I can see a bit more. So this one, you can see the, see the stem and I'll add a leaf to that, right? So here we have some really nice nice stems and leaves going on. So you can go all around and kind of put those in where you think they'll look good. Again, there's no right or wrong place to put them because nature puts them in all different places. So you can kind of just tuck them in there. So now we have this really nice dense drawing, right? With all of these different flowers and um, different leaves. So we're gonna move on to color. So let's put away our drawing tools. Bye bye Sharpie and pull out whatever you're using, crayons, color pencils, paints. Um, I have my watercolors here. These little guys, um, I have to shake them up. Shake them, shake them, shake them. Sometimes they settle a little bit. And then I'm going to use this eyedropper to put it in my palette. So it's like a little, like a little eyedropper. And then I'm just gonna put some drops in my palette. And this is where my paint's gonna go. Um, I like these because they have really bright 
bright colors, um, which is nice for when you're doing something with flowers. So everybody grab your colors. I would have done this before class, but I knew that Mona was wandering around and I didn't want her to accidentally um, take a little lick of any of these colorful paints. So I just need an extra second to set up, but I'm sure it's fine. In the meantime, while I'm setting up, you guys can add some more um, leaves and flowers to your piece if you want to. All right, cool. So everybody choose what um, is the main color for your flowers you are gonna pick. I think mine are gonna be pink because um, not only does it match Mona's stroller, this is my um, very similar to my inspiration piece that I showed you guys, this, this pretty color. So I'm gonna try and recreate that. So grab your main color that you're gonna use for your flower and we're gonna use a light shade of that color. So if you're using watercolor paint like me, that means you're, you want your paint to have a lot of water in it. So there's a very light shade of the color. If you're using pencils or crayons, you want to use either a light color or you can use a dark color, but with a very light amount of pressure on the page. So I want you to do kind of one wash of your light version of your color. And I want you to go and paint in those flowers with a light version of that color. So we're going to kind of do one pass of all light colors. See, this is a light shade, but it's like super bright. But I like that because it's easy for you guys to see. And it just looks nice. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint, color in all those flowers. You see how I'm not being precious at all? I'm just like blobbing it on there. There's that word again, blob. I'm just getting all of that nice pink in there so we can get a really nice kind of first pass on all of these petals. Looks really, really pretty. I think flowers make everyone happy, right? I don't think that there's any way that flowers could make you sad because they're just so beautiful and they smell pretty and they look beautiful and they just brighten your day. So we're gonna go ahead and get that first pass of color in there. Awesome work, cool. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a darker shade of the same color, um, or if you're using pink like me, you could use a red, just a similar color that's darker. Um, for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add more of this paint here to my palette. And what I want you to do is we're gonna create volume by adding that dark color to some of the bottom part of the flower. So if, imagine if we have a light source, the sun hitting the tops of our flowers, we would see kind of some darker, darker shades um, around the bottom of the petals. It may be easier to see in the piece that's already finished. So you can see there's some like darker shades around the bottom of the flowers petals. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead, and again, I'm not even painting in the lines here. I'm just picking areas where it seems like it will give me some volume if I add some dark shade to that flower, because the petals are kind of all tucked in together, right? So you can just be really, really messy here. It's totally cool because it's not, it's not supposed to look perfect. It wouldn't look perfect in nature. So you just wanna add some really beautiful, darker color to some of these petals. You could even go around, go around the top and just do a hint of it at the top too, maybe where some of the petals would be overlapping. Um, not as much as the bottom, but you see now we're starting to like get a nice shape to the flower. It feels like it has some volume, super pretty. Right, and look at all of this with just drawing those simple, simple petal shapes around and around and around, over and over again, and the same thing with the leaves. We picked one leaf shape and we just did it over and over and over again, and look at that. Really built it out, it looks pretty. So this is looking nice there. And we're gonna go around and do this with all of your flowers. And if you're using crayons or markers, this is the exact same concept gonna go around and kind of add that so we have some depth 
in there. That's really, really nice. It's very pretty. It's almost, you can almost smell the flowers as you are kind of getting them all um, painted in and colored in, right? All of a sudden it feels very fragrant in my apartment from these beautiful flowers. All right, so once we've got that in there, I think that is looking pretty nice. We are gonna pull out some colors for our leaves. That's what we're gonna do next. So for the leaves, I've pulled a green. Now I've really gotta wash my breath. Look how pink my water is. My water turned totally pink, see that? So I probably get a little bit of pink in my green, but that's okay. So what I want you to do is the same thing. We wanna take a light or medium shade of that green and just like we did that first pass at the flowers, we're gonna do the same thing with the leaves. We're just gonna do a pass of the leaves and the stems. Because as you're painting your leaves, you'll probably run into those little stems that you put in there. So go ahead and give those some green, some color. Again, does not have to be in the lines, does not have to be perfect. It looks better when it's not perfect. And if you're like me using paint, you might have some some issue where your green might run into the, the flower color if, you're, if your paint is not dry. So sometimes I actually leave a little gap of space um, so that doesn't happen. And that is um, totally fine to do. It almost like adds to the style of the piece to do that. So see, we're just doing the same thing over and over again. And if you guys weren't here, I'd be listening to a podcast right now and listening to music and just zoning out it's way more fun to be painting and drawing with you guys, but this is just one of the things that I think is so therapeutic about making art, especially something like this, where it doesn't require a lot of thinking. You just kind of do it. Once you, once you know how to draw that leaf, you just keep doing it over and over again, and then your brain gets to take a rest, your hands keep moving, and it just makes you feel nice and relaxed. Right, it's like art therapy which is super nice these days, especially. All right, I'm still going around, painting in all these leaves. And then once we're done with these leaves, the next thing we're gonna do is the exact same thing we did with the flower is we're gonna have a darker shade of the green um, or whatever color you're using to paint your leaves. It's probably green. And then we're gonna add some dimension to these leaves. So in my case, I actually think I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go the opposite way. I have a little bit of yellow here. So I think I'm gonna mix a yellow green and see if I can add kind of a yellow green in some areas, how that looks. Might get some little drips here because the watercolor is challenging to work vertically like this. Usually I'd have my, my paper flat on the page but I gotta hold it up so you guys can see it. So there, I have some areas where I've added this highlight color of this yellow on the flowers. You can see that coming out a little bit, but now I'm gonna go back to my green. I'm gonna get a dark green or a darker green, and I'm gonna kind of do the same thing, just like we did with the flowers. I'm gonna find some spots to put that dark green in there, like that. Super, super fun. See? Oh, look, I went out of the lines. It doesn't matter. Yay, it doesn't matter. Especially for a watercolor, something like this, being in the lines. It's boring. You want it to come out of the lines. So there, I've got some dark spots, some little areas of interest on these leaves I have here. Looks pretty good. So the last thing we're gonna do, and now this, I gotta get this to dry, <laughs> dry a little bit, because I don't want the colors to mix. I'm gonna add in some a shadow color. And so for me, I'm using this, it's called medium gray, but it's kind of like a bluish gray. So pick something that you would want to use as a shadow color. So it could be, it could be gray, it could be a blue, um, it could be like even a brown would work. Something that's dark. And so what we are gonna do is these little pocket areas between the flowers that we don't have stems and we don't have leaves, we're gonna paint, start by painting some shadows in there. 
Because if we were peering into this bush on the street somewhere, there would probably be some sidewalk behind it or some shadow in there because there's not a lot of light coming in. So we wanna fill in those holes. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, but we wanna put the inference there. We're gonna infer that there's some shadow back there and it's really gonna help our, our flowers pop. So you guys see that? I'm gonna put that all in there. And then once I get all the holes filled in, I'm gonna put it a little bit around the edge and I'll show you guys what I mean. So here, I'm just gonna kind of do a little edge here, like that, where it kind of fades out a little bit. See that? And it gives that, that irregular edge that I really like from a style point. So I'm just gonna go around like that. See, and just fill that, fill that in. So you can do that with your crayons or your colored pencils. Um, we're gonna go around the whole thing and fill it out like this. I feel like you guys could put this piece away uh, for next Mother's Day and give it as a Mother's Day present, right? This is like reminding me of Mother's Day. I'm gonna have to make sure my kids see this piece. I always try and get them to come to the class but they never want to. They don't think it's cool, I don't know. They think it's lame. I think when it's your mom doing it, it's different, right? Because you think it's lame. All right, so let's go in and keep filling these in. I'm gonna go all the way around. Totally not perfect at all, which is exactly what we want. We just wanna be relaxing and painting and doing the same thing over and over and over again to give us this look and feel that we're going for, like that. All the way around. And you don't have to do too much of this, just like a little bit. So let's see, like that. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this same shadow color and then we're gonna add some shadow to um, the flowers and the leaves. And that will be our last little bit here. Look at that, we're getting our, our flowers all together here. So see guys, we drew this with totally simple tools. Totally simple tools. I think this is impressive for the tools that we used. So you guys should be proud of what you have created here. So you're, you're gonna impress your family and friends. All right, we've got all of that kind of background, that irregular shape in there. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take that dark color, but now I'm just gonna kind of do the bottom parts of the flowers. So right on the petals, I'm gonna put in some of this shadow color. Just a couple of areas like that. See that? Boom! Pops right off the page. It's like magic. I love it. So go ahead and take that same, that same shadow color and we're going to put it on the rest of the flowers and make them boom pop off the page. Boom boom pop. Look at that. Pops right off. Yeah, I can, it, totally, it looks totally different from when I'm looking at it to what you guys see on camera. So it's cool to, to turn and see that. So we are coming to the end of this, guys. I think we did, we did stellar work today, getting all this in there. Look at that, popped right off the page. This is like my favorite part of the piece at the end. It feels like the reward of all the hard work to put in those little bits of shadows where you, you see it pop. So now on the leaves, do the same thing. Just put a little bit of the shadow in a few places. See how it's looking. Just put it wherever. Doesn't have to be on every leaf, but maybe some of the leaves. We'll give it a little dimension there. Cool. I think we are done. I think we are done with this beautiful piece. But if you're not done, keep working on it. Add more flowers, add more shadows, go back and fix something maybe that you wanted to fix as we were working. Um, and as always, please send me your drawings. I would love to see them. Um, and I can't remember if I announced this at the beginning, but if I did, great, I'm gonna say it again. And if I didn't, I'm gonna say it for the first time now. Last week we were giving away a Pinky Book Bundle, Pinky the Flamingo, two books. 
and we had a random drawing from um, the artwork that was submitted and the winner of the Pinky Book Bundle is Peter. <gasps> Yay, Peter. So Peter, have your mom, your grown up, send me um, your address and we will get those books out to you very shortly. So awesome, I hope you enjoy them. Um, but please send me your flower drawings. I will share them as always. And I love drawing with you guys. I will see you next week and have a nice weekend. Bye.